look whorish. I think you'd have to I asked look if I like look you're like worth your... money to be whorish. Otherwise, you're just easy. I asked if I look like your mom. And I said, no, you don't look whorish at all. <laughs> oh, hey, hi, it's me, Well, the Finger Do, and I'm here with my illegitimate drag daughter, Wilhelmina Boxfahartz. How are you, girl? Oh, Wilma, I'm so happy to be here. Today. Liar. <laughs> all right. So the reason that we're here is it's the halfway mark on the American drag race. And is they're it, almost it, done the British one because the British one did start two weeks later, but they haven't been playing any shenanigans. Ago, they're just getting to it. They, they have their challenges and they send people home in Britain. There's none of this. They even had a seven month uh, hiatus. There's no lollygagging yeah. in Britain. And they got rid of someone over the hiatus. No kidding. Poor Victoria. Oh, poor Victoria. Mm. But so now we're uh, looking at n uh, nine, eight queens, eight queens left on the British, uh, the American side, and four. We're at the top four now for the British. And I thought it would be a good moment for us to just talk about how how's the season going. Like, for instance, I normally do a, a pick top four. Like, I, I yes. review the queens and I say who my top four are. Traditionally... Terrible at it. No, that's not true. No, I picked Sasha Velour as the winner. Well done. I did. I said she'd either win or go home first. Huh? But then I said that about Ginny Lemon. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong both accounts. Mm -hmm. In fact, the only person that I picked for top four who's still in the top four, Tace. Really? Yeah, I didn't pick any of the others. Bimini. Bimini. Uh, the you didn't pick Lawrence? No. Nope. Lawrence Chase. Well, Lawrence during his Meet the Queens. Now, I looked up La Lawrence Larry. That's his name. Uh, Larry, uh, I looked. I looked up all the queens when I first saw they meet the queens. I never and, do. Well, I go in blind. I want to know nothing. Nothing. But I, hate, I often come out knowing nothing. But I hate to review them without something to say. Otherwise, now I'm just looking at the surface and saying what I think of the package. And I just look at the surface. Yeah. Well, I'm not interested in what's underneath. Well, the dirt is. You don't want to see what's underneath this or this. No. This is why I spend so much time on this. So you don't want to see that. <laughs> but anyway, Lawrence said in his Meet the Queens that he couldn't sing or dance, and he did not lie. Who were your other choices for uh, top four? Uh, uh, Ch Cherry Valentine. Really? Yeah, I picked Joe Black, but I, I did also say that I thought his wardrobe would keep him from proceeding. I can't remember if I thought Sister Sister... Oh. would do oh. top four because she was just so weird that meet the queens and i really liked how she was in the meet the queens and her drag was so weird yes. that i couldn't not yes, think it was. all I kinds was of confused wrong. by her all boy kinds of haircut wrong. the fire tuck in the front and party in the back it was very confusing i i remember reading something after their uh, lockdown mm. that a lot of them tried to maintain their hair so when they came back to filming there wouldn't be any odd jumps uh, and I As guess if we wouldn't know that there was a pause or cheekbones or nose jobs or flippers or whose work uh, was your favorite work? Well, I would have to say Ahura's because I noticed she'd had it done, but she still looked like her. Bimini had upkeep. I if thought she... whatever Bimini had done, Bimini looked. Fantastic. She did it she the way back. you're supposed to do it. She looked like she'd been on mm. vacation. She looked relaxed. Her, the fillers that she had in weren't beyond the realms of science. <laughs> you know, um, where in Sister Sister, it was just such a change. And and then with um, Ohara. can handle big team. No. But with Ahura, like, there's something about her where if she hadn't come back with something done, I would have thought there was something wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, if anyone's getting work done on, during a hiatus, during a lockdown, Lips. it's going to be a horror. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I have to say, Ellie Diamond is one of those queens that I've, I've liked out of the gates. Mm. Like, I really did. But her age has always kept me from committing to her as, as a viable choice. And I'm very impressed that she's top four. I'm not surprised because her makeup is spectacular. Her makeup is and her runways are gorgeous. Her runways are gorgeous. They were getting a little bit repetitive. For well, a sure, while. sure. But she's but 21. She hasn't 21. seen enough. To... I'm just, I just, there's just, I'm just not interested yet. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in seeing what Ellie's going to do in two or three when years. When she's 27, she's going to be interesting. Mm. She'll have a story or two. 
she'll have things to say. Scars. Yeah, yeah. Wherein Lawrence is a year older, two years older, and it's a world of difference. But then we just had this interesting flip where Lawrence was the sweetheart of Drag Race, and then she tells Ellie off in a heated, unnecessarily vicious and personalized attack, but it wasn't completely out of left field. Like, Lawrence had some points in that. It's just too bad that she blew them out of proportion. I I love Tace's approach to that. Just, yep. hey, girl, we're in a competition. Nothing made you know, me like love it? Tace mm. more than watching her not get bothered by it. Same no. with Bimini. Bimini was even less no. bothered. Couldn't have cared less. Couldn't be arsed. No. Leave My biggest point. surprise, because I was team Lawrence yeah. right from the get-go, yeah. like, mm, who is this? Yeah. Uh, Bimini snuck up on me, especially after that first episode. I'm like, mm, yeah. she's going on first. Uh, Bimini just keeps getting better and better. And I'm... Well, her whole, that the way she talks, she's so subtle. The work she's had done, her face doesn't move. She talks like this. She's very calm. And when you saw her in that like Regency remake costume off the top with the flat bodice and the headpiece, she wasn't very interesting. No. And there was nothing that she was doing in those first couple of episodes with so many other queens mm. to distract you that she drew the eye. And it yeah. was as people started fading off, but also as she started doing like that that uh, uh, fake off, the the, the bake, bake off spoof, the yes. mini challenge, so funny. And no one expected that was when everyone was like. Who's that? Oh, as soon as showed up for me, she yeah. showed up all the way. Yeah, yeah. I was so sorry that Veronica got kicked off because of COVID. Because I think, I, I think I'm the only person who saw her on uh, All Together Now, where she sang uh, Shirley Bassey's version of I'm Coming Up by Pink. And she did such a great job. And uh, um, Davina DeCampo was part of the panel and she even stood up for her and she did a great job. And then she's on Drag Race and not one of those queens has a reference to her as a performer at all. How is that possible? There's a lot of people in England. There's a lot of stuff but, on TV. But I just There's feel a lot like... of things distracting you. I just didn't understand <clears throat> why if she is so seasoned, mm -hmm. so professional. Because the first episode, I thought that she'd been doing drag for six months and was just happy to be there. Like, oh, she's oh, going yeah. home in two seconds. Oh, yeah, no. She was so excited yeah. to see everyone. Yeah. But uh, I just didn't understand why she was so upset that people weren't <clears throat> paying any attention to yeah. her. Who cares? They're not, they're not judging you. Just, no. Who cares what the other contestants I think, think? I think the thing that, that was going on with uh, Veronica is because she's a theater mm. performer, no. I don't think that she does do a lot of bar gigs or hang out with no. drag queens. So this was a great experience for her to meet and network. But they weren't having her, some no. of them. Well, know. I think it was because she knew who she knew who most of them were. Well, sure, because, yeah. But she, none of them had any idea no. who she was. And what's funny she's is... the most successful. But she's also one of those people that, as they all prove, she's completely forgettable. Yeah. Which is sad. Out of drag, you'd walk by her. You wouldn't look at her once. I and, would push her down by the face. Uh, and, and then in drag, it's amazing how Country little bar. makeup she really... Like, she's got a lot of makeup on, but how little it shows. And her face changes so much. It's ridiculous. I, I, I've, I was really impressed with Talented. her. Talented. I'm excited to see her do a season three. Now, the scuttlebutt for Drag Race UK Ooh, is scuttlebutt. that they're already editing season three what? to air later this year. They didn't inform us of this. Well, they're doing it. They didn't ask us. They didn't ask our opinion one night. No. But we're going to get two seasons of Drag Race UK this year. Huzzah. No. Sorry. I'm still not yeah. sick of Drag Race. No. I'm now, I have also it. heard that the Drag Race Canada has started its process. They haven't finalized anything from what I've heard. I don't know. But then the people that I know that applied may not have got chosen and they've already cast it. Mm. Then they just don't know. Let's investigate. Well, I just don't know. We'll find out. As soon as I hear, you'll hear. But let's jump over to the American Drag American Race. American Drag Race, now, which this season has been on for 17 years. I'm it's so the longest over running it. season of Drag Race. Also, it's unilaterally been called the less the least impressive season of drag race and it's coming under the the uk's numbers like people just aren't loving it as much as the uk oh really yeah it's they're doing well from I what it took I, a while to get going but now that it's going it's good now that it's going it's all right I, you know i think i think that that two start where they had everyone lip sync one-on-one -on -one and then two episodes where it was the Ugh. winners and the pork choppers <sighs> Somebody had to go home in there somewhere. I'm sorry, someone had to. One queen had to go home without meeting everybody from both sides. Because uh, this is too much. And then they saved Candy. Now, no offense to Candy. 
I'm not saying we're scared that of she's candy. not worth watching, but at this point, when it was Candy and Simone lip syncing, the only thing I was saying in my head was it had better not be Simone. If Simone sashays away, I am going to reach in there and snatch RuPaul bald headed. I am not going to play. But it was Simone that won and Candy. And, and then there were, it hit me. It was like, oh, she's, this is how I said it in my head at the time, she's supposed to be a heavy hitter this season. And short of that bust up she had with Tamisha, Candy Muse has been boring and, and I mediocre. I had either, like, she would create some good drama for Something. Not, not necessarily a competitor, but just a, a, a big wheel to watch, you know, like Silky Nutmeg, where there was drama, drama, drama. But the problem is no one likes drama. And especially the longer you're into the season and the more tired these queens are getting, where it's like, I just want to talk to my mother, you know. I just want to watch the challenges. Yeah. If, I want, if I want drama, I'll watch Untucked, and I don't. No, I watch Untucked, and it's not worth it, I'll tell you right now. But, so now, we've had, um, well, Elliot was the last queen to Elliot go. Elliot to, to finally now, went and home, she, Mama. And she uh, went home twice. She was the first queen eliminated, but the first, the, the eighth queen to, uh, eighth place queen to oh, the sachet away. higher drag map yeah. that I don't understand. Yeah. But, uh, after that, we had, who was the first queen after her? I have to say, what? there's this wiki fan page for RuPaul's Drag Race, mm -hmm. and it's brilliant. It has all of the seasons. If you are ever in need for an answer on a RuPaul's Drag Race, just, what season was that? Do wiki drag race. Just search those three words. Just Google it. What were you looking for? Um, season 13, who was yeah. the first girl to go home? Kimora Hall. Oh, that's right, I oh, forgot. Oh, Kimora, barely get your face on Hall. Although, I understand it would take me quite a while to get a face <laughs> on I'm sorry, six hours and what? <laughs> those who can't judge, isn't that what it uh, is? Those who can't do and those who can't teach Well, I did both. Teach and I taught and I judged. <laughs> 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 and it still took six hours. So, no, but doing a face... Especially for Kimora, who is very clo closeted with her drag. Like, she's mm. not working every week. She's, she doesn't have that drag at home. She has to go somewhere to her locker and get it on, you know? It's, it's not... Drag Heidi. Home. The hardest thing about drag, and this is something I'm sure that you're finding, is as you Getting do it, it as you do it, every time you put it on, you find a new way to put it on, and you kind of create these shortcuts for yourself. As you develop... Your face, your features. I like my eyeliner like this all the time. I like, you know, I've been really playing with a lot of different shapes and stuff, and I'm finally kind of getting into some zones where I like this kind of cut crease. I like this kind of cheek. So it's becoming quicker for me to put on my drag. But I think with someone like Kamora, she was really just one of those people who, when she put on drag, she really enjoyed it. So it was like a full bottle Take of wine, music, awesome. sling back. Uh, cha cha heels, you know what I mean? Like she was, she was taking the fantasy to the wall, and uh, uh, so to do it in a restricted time. But then, why would you apply? Because you want to, to be drag on TV. race. Well, yeah, but she was on TV for a hot minute. I know. The best People thing about Kamara Hall being on TV was that that elimination, that first elimination mm -hmm. in the bottom with her was Denali who is from Chicago as well. And they were both like, oh, well, a Chicago girl's going home first on Drag Race. And you could just see, like, they were just, they took it personally, like, not in an angry way, just like, oh. <laughs> and, you know, Denali was going to send Kamara home. Yes. She was going to send her home or kill her trying. Triple you know? sow cow all over yeah, that Yeah, bitch. yeah. Like, I, Denali's not going to feel bad about sending no. anyone home until they're home. But it's getting Nancy them there, Kerrigan, you on that stage if she has. Yeah, to. she's got a lead pipe with your name oh. all over it. <laughs> and uh, so for the two of them to do that, and then, you know, Kimora said this was another reason why Kimora wasn't a pick for me. Although, I thought she had the potential to be top four, but she said she's a stand and deliver queen. Yeah. And like that's like if you just stand, stand there and lip sync, that's not that's not enough here. This is drag race. These bitches are throwing themselves Circle. off of 10 feet tall platforms onto the ground and walking away. Like, if you're not doing that, then something else had better be happening. And, it, yeah. and Bob Mackey isn't what I'm talking about. Yeah. But If you're not doing that, you're, you're basically just, I might as well be watching MMA. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And then the best thing that happened, though, was after that episode aired, pardon me, Denali did, if you follow her on YouTube, she's got quite a few videos. Um, 
of stuff that that's before Drag Race. But one of the things she did was she posted her and Olivia and almost every drag queen and king in Chicago in a video called Drag Excellence. And it's all of them lip syncing to 100% Pure Love, which was the <laughs> song they did together. It is the best video I have ever seen in my life. I'm already following three or four queens I've never heard of who were just so interesting in that video. If you haven't seen it yet, what rock are you living under? I'm putting the link up here right now. Go and see it. Experience the divine that is Chicago drag. But then after that, I feel like Denali's been, uh, I called her Karen in one of my reviews because she was whining and moaning about being safe. <laughs> about being safe and how, how hard it's it was to- Calling to, people Karen's is triggering oh, these days. I love to do it. I love to do it. Dina, this is the, the issue with Denali, and I think the reason she's mad is she is good. She is good. She is good. She's got moves. She's mm -hmm. solid. She's funny. She's not that memorable. It's 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 sad. It's like the, anytime you're going through the queens, like who do I like? Well, oh yeah, Denali's great. Yeah, like her but Jonathan Van Ness on Snatch Game was brilliant. Fantastic. But I didn't know it was her first off. I almost forgot that she's Yeah, there. it's like, who is the... Oh, so Denali. I understand why she's getting frustrated. She's yeah. like, I'm amazing. I was like, I know that you're there. Just keep forgetting. <laughs> Sorry, don't hurt me. Who went home after Denali? Who Joey J. Oh, that's oh, right. Joey oh, J. So Joey J was my season's crush. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah he was super cute. Joey J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, I love someone wearing glasses. I like that he was, uh, a super uh, femmy gay, yes. like I just there's something about, like, when I was younger, I was definitely attracted to like a heterosexual cisgendered male, but that was also the '70s, and those men were pigs. Now there's something like my favorite kind of drag queen is a big muscle Mary. Like I like a drag queen that looks like a man in a dress because part of me that's drag. I'm not saying I don't. Sir, stop that. <laughs> I'm not saying that I don't enjoy the the more uh, feminine. Fem yeah, yeah. Uh, like Jada Essence Hall. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it, but in my choice of choice. And the thing that I liked about Joey J was when she didn't wear a wig, she didn't look masculine in drag. Like, no. she didn't look like a man in drag. She looked like... Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> she looked great. Um, and then when she did wear a wig, I, I enjoyed it. She just didn't wear great wigs. That was her problem. No, but if you don't wear wigs, you don't have great wigs. Thing. You yeah. don't have great wigs. No. But I was totally I understand why the judges want a wig, but I was totally, I, I loved Joey J's mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Yeah, and I thought she was doing really well. Like she, that first acting challenge threw her, mm. but she did all right in it. She just didn't do great. But, um, I'm surprised she went home as early as she did. I just thought I she thought was going to do long. better. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, who did she lip sync against? Clearly, this season's been very riveting it's been for us. Vivid. Oh, it's been Lala Ree. That's right. Lala, Lala said. Lala was as Lala was another assassin. one that I was sorry to see go because I didn't think I would like her. Like when I, I warmed up to Lala. Yeah. I for when sure. I watched the Meet the Queens, she was clearly the least seasoned. And there was also something about her makeup and the lighting in that Meet the Queens where it wasn't doing her any favors. But while on the show, her makeup was stunning. Like her, her, her blend was really beautiful. I was very impressed. Yeah, I, I warmed up to Lala. I was sad to see Lala go home. She was also over 30. Oh, like said 30, that old whore. Huh? No, but 30 that... something. Like I, I don't want to say 36, but I remember hearing her agent going, no. Yeah, because she's a working queen. Yeah, like she's busy. She, she got works. things to do. Uh, but yeah, I really, I really liked her. You know who else I really warmed up to because I didn't like her in the Meet the Queens, and off the top, she was so reserved and so like, just watching Tamisha. I didn't like her out of the gate, but didn't like her after she got through the gate. Well, there was be a honest. moment when she was back in the <laughs> workroom where she said that she wanted that sisterhood, like that that community where they were all like kicking and getting to know mm. each other and the season wasn't set up for that no but, but Tamisha was great like as the season queen the lady said it's time to go you know it's like she like she wasn't gonna argue with anybody but no she could argue with people and then she no no but, but about, the, about the show itself you. about the show itself but Fair enough. but no but I don't I didn't um 
I didn't like her at first, and I, it's not that I was sorry to see her go, because quite frankly, the more she told us about her uh, surviving cancer and what she was dealing with on the show... Well, I understood well, why she was moving like that. Yeah, but it's also at the same time, it's like, I get why you're here, I do. Yeah. But sweet criminy. Jesus. There's got to be a point in the day where not having your bodily fluids collect in a bag on your abdomen needs to be the priority to get over before you throw on a pair of heels and lip sync to share. Well, you know? If you're creative, you just yeah. use it as part of your padding, I guess. Oh but she, but the thing was, Tamisha did an excellent job. She did, yeah. I, I'd like to see what she's capable I just of doing. Found uh, a lot of her outfits seemed a bit dated. dated. Yeah, very I would, dated. I would say that would be... I, mean, I know that she makes everything herself. Yeah, but there. like, yeah. I'd like to know when the last time she did make something for herself. Because even that gold outfit everyone liked. Yeah, that was like the Haida Dynasty yeah. from the Car Diane Carroll collection. So, yeah, they're, they're, uh, I'd like to see what Tamisha... Now, Tamisha was one of those queens that had merch. She was selling high-top sneakers. High-heel sneakers? No, running. Like, just high-top running sneakers? No, nope, just high-top sure. running shoes. Uh, Candy Muse. Sporty Spice Butch Lesbian Drag Realness Sneakers? Nope, they were pink and blue or pink and purple. So with their face on the side. Okay. Yeah, I think I think Bob the Drag Queen bought a pair. A couple of people bought a pair. Like, they've done videos with them. It's very funny. But the, um, the Candy Muse took the arrogant moniker and made a necklace out of that and was selling that online. This was the thing I was interested with this season was more so with the British because of the lockdown and the seventh month hiatus they were on. When the first episode of Drag Race UK happened, so did all their merch. You could buy t-shirts that minute. Smart. And it was so smart because I've not seen that on any season before. It always happens at the end all of a sudden at the end of the season, or as they eliminate, they start selling stuff online. And maybe there's been something in the contract that said you couldn't do that before. And maybe because no one can perform and make Get money. Your merch out. Yeah, so they're, they're letting them do merch, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but I was very impressed with how prepared the British girls particularly, but also the American. And then as far as the, the girls each week, Gottmik and Lawrence are the only two doing consistent tutorials on the makeup look they had for that week. Oh, wow. Yeah, so both of them are, like, even whether they win or not, they're doing that. Like, yeah. She takes a deep dive. Yeah. takes a deep dive people. Oh, yeah, I, I like to, I like to, I don't watch all of it, but I, <laughs> I like to know it's out there. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, who was, who, uh, who was your biggest surprise for the American season 13 so far? Uh, the one who I wasn't sure about, just because... I, I'd only seen that one face was Gottmik. Yeah, yeah. And I love, I love Gottmik. Yeah, yeah, he's doing such a great job. But on top of that, the thing that worried me for Gottmik, because he's a professional makeup artist, all of the drag photos I've seen of him in drag are head and shoulders, often without wardrobe. You know, so that was the mystery for me was, well, this queen does a great face. Can she haul out the drag? Yeah. And yes, she can. But this is the other thing. I've As we've progressed to season 13, it's becoming less of a drag show and more of a fashion show with three or five designers that are making everybody's outfits. And now I'm just yeah. waiting for these queens to walk down the runway as um, Vanjie did in outfits she hadn't seen until she opened them to put them on for the runway. Like, that to me is not drag, that's modeling. Like, that's a different thing. I like to see part of the process of developing that drag. Like, even if you're not making these costumes, these costumes are being made because of work you've done your career. Do you see what I mean? And the thing that Gottmik did that impressed me was on those challenges, like the ball challenge where she had to make her own yeah. outfit, that outfit looked like the other two. Yeah. They all came from the same head. You know what I mean? Even if, I don't care if you can sew. If you can tell me what you want and you know, I want, I want color block. I want so just make me look pretty. Be like, yeah, I, I like specific. pink, you know, like, or, and running out of the room. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You know, input, input. Uh, so yeah, Gottmik has been a huge, I'm so impressed. Uh, by uh, her drag and his attitude. Like, yeah. it's such a good job. I was worried because of the Mean Girls thing. Candy Muse, Tina, and yeah. Gottmik. I just was worried that it would become a, a Verlaska Talks thing where somebody got lost in the mix of Sometimes this Sometimes the only people that realize that the Mean Girls are the Mean Girls themselves. That's and it's like, what are you, 
Oh, are you being mean to us that we didn't even pay this? Yeah, we don't even know who you are. To you. <laughs> yeah. We thought you were just those girls, not the mean girls. They were. Yeah. Just those girls. Yeah. Now, uh, who do you hope wins the British one right now? British one, I'm very torn because Lauren, Lawrence Jenny was uh -huh. a very early favorite of mine. Uh, but Bimini. Yeah. B uh, Bimini's been, I'm yeah. so impressed. So what about Taste, though? Taste has been consistent. I like Taste. Yeah. Uh, Taste looks gorgeous. Yep. It's a, it's just taste the, is good the, TV. Taste, taste is good TV. Good TV knows taste how to chatter. Awesome to deliver. Yep. Uh, just, but just, if you want to hire somebody to come into room and be charming and look fantastic, she's going to win every time. Yeah. I, I, there's nothing wrong with taste, but for some reason no. she's not. Just and I love rapping. watching her lip syncs. Like I'm yeah. sure she put on a great yeah. show, but lots of queens do that. So you, you think Bimini, then who? Tace or Lawrence? Lawrence. Yeah, and Lawrence, then Tace. It's still Lawrence. Lawrence is, just makes me yeah, laugh yeah, so yeah. hard. And then and then Tace. And, uh, and Ellie's, it's just nice to see you there. Well, Ellie is this season's blue hydrangea, wherein yeah. no one expected anything from her. She's the youngest on the season. Yeah. And she's blowing everyone out of the water. Like, so on one level, it's a great introduction and it hasn't hurt Blue Hydrange at all. Her Instagram has never been more followed. She, I think if there wasn't a pandemic going on, would be out there doing a lot more yeah. than she is. And she's from Ireland. Like, like lots of people, like people are going on about how remote Scotland is. Well, so is Ireland. So Ireland's it's, not even attached. No, no, at least Scotland you could wander into downtown London at some point. <laughs> Shoved there by a cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is how I think uh, they, they uh, invasion started. They, they just, the Scots were accidentally, we didn't know where they were. Where's oh, the hi. chippy? Where's the chip? Oh, oh, it's lo Right, storm the castle! <laughs> I do the worst Scottish accent. I'm Scottish and I do the worst Scottish accent. Um, <laughs> so on the American side, we're, we're halfway through. Have anybody that you picked off the top changed your mind about them no because i uh, again i go in blind so right. i just judge from the get-go right. simone grabbed me right away right away right away uh, that like, hair in the meet the queens mm. right away i was like and then Gigi good did that oh really yes Gigi good they're part of a group now this is the story i heard Gigi was Tell performing a at a club or a restaurant in la West Hollywood probably and either she walked in and Simone was there or Simone walked in and she was there and Simone was with some people and she was and Simone said who are you you look cute and Gigi said back you look cute who are you and that's they've been friends ever since and so she's one of the people Gigi one of the things she's done in the last year is, is started wigs like you can order wigs from her I don't know if you can right now but uh, but Good she weeks. was, yeah, but she styled, she styled, um, she did the beaded one with Simone's name nice. in the back. She did that, that one for the Meet the Queens. I think Amazing. she's done a couple of them. Nice. And I'm not mm. sure that she made the, um, do-rag look, but I, I, I do know that, uh, Gigi Good's been helping with some of S Simone's runways. So she has a good team around her of people, Simone. Plus, I liked her anyway, but there is something, she's just this big-eyed, kid sitting there with no hair I can't even tell like sometimes she looks 80 sometimes she looks 8 and then she throws on all that drag and then she does that face and <laughs> and it's all sass and she like she turns around on the runway and, mm, and it is the best ever and it's like who the heck is that woman and, it's the entertainer. and then she turns up in these acting challenges and just kills she it right. yeah. she was so funny with Candy and the bossy Rossi thing she just <laughs> Well, she couldn't get over the fit, so she just got over it and showed everybody her business. She's just, she's just one of those people. I don't, I, I don't know if it's down to because she doesn't know if it's right or wrong to make these choices, so she just makes them anyway, or she is just a comic genius and knows this is good. I think she just knows what yeah. she's doing. I think yeah. she's a funny lady. Yeah. yeah. So Team Simone. Yeah. And do you think she'll win? Are you, are you I hoping? I think she's got a good shot. Who's her biggest competition? You think Rosé's? Dancing is her biggest competition. Yeah. Bless her. <laughs> She's all right on a stage by herself, but yeah, don't ask her to uh, five, six, seven, yeah. eight. She Oof. will, she will, yeah. 
take you with her. Yeah. Um, do you think Rosé is going to give her a run for the money? I think Rosé Rosé sort of snuck up on me. I was too busy yeah. looking at Tina Burner yeah. for some reason. And really? Then, Tina Burner is like, oh, I thought you were going to be a woman. No uh, offense. And then I was like, oh, who's this? Uh, and now I'm starting to look at Rosé. And yeah. Uh, I hate to say this, but I started liking Rosé the episode she dropped that Scottish accent. Do you remember she wasn't in drag or anything? It was just she started talking with a Scottish. It's like you're such a whore for a Scottish accent. Well, but it's it's my my heritage. I understand my them too. the accent, but also there's just something lovely about a Scottish. You don't hear them often, so when it happens, it's like Australian too. I really love an Australian like because you often hear. Why don't you like an Australian? <laughs> I accent. do. I love Australian oh, accents. Dumb tanned Canadians. Oh. Hi Australia. But yeah, when she when Rosé did that accent, like I'm I'm from oh it was because of her her runway. Yeah. The bagpipe, and then she went oh hi. Went, oh. Because that's a hard accent to do. It's, it's like a, Welsh. It's a hard accent to do. There were often times when I was in Glasgow that people would speak to me. I would just smile and nod. <laughs> yeah. I know it's English. Yeah, yeah. You've been speaking it longer than I have, but I do no, no. I don't know what you're saying. I recognize none of that. Um, speaking of Australia, so so you think uh, you think Simone's going to win for America, and you think that Simone would Bimini, be my yeah. would be my pick. Yeah, I like for Simone to win. If Simone couldn't win. Rosé's really good. I'd like to see Rosé win because I know she wants it as much, but I don't know. She doesn't impress me. Her and Denali, there's something about their competitive like focus that takes the joy out of it I, for I, me. I think what it probably is for them is that because they are very professional, yeah. they are being very professional. Yeah, they really are. They're and doing, being very yeah. professional does not always make for good TV. Good TV, no. See, because I really like Olivia Lux, but she's also been on a bit of a well, skid. Olivia yeah. was one who at the yeah. beginning was like, ooh, who's her? And yeah. now I'm just like, she's just teeth. Yeah, she's just, just made... Teeth. She's She's stunning. Know, that disco yeah. thing. Oh, God. Damn but it. I just want to... I want to... I want a little more... Yeah, well, there needs to be some follow through yeah. there. So, speaking of weird accents no one likes, Australia announced their drag queens. Now, I'm not going to do the review until they do no. the Meet the Queens because right now they don't even have a launch date. All it is is Michelle Visage and some Australian comic who's adorable, don't get me wrong. Uh, I can't think of his name. It's it's probably either something very pronounceable or completely yeah. not. But Kevin they, Vegemite. Yeah, they're just uh, or or uh, Blunder Thunderstick McDougal or something. That's what it is. <laughs> That's probably what it is. So they uh, just literally showed queens. Now this is the other thing. The they showed footage of queens walking into a workroom. They could have been walking in for the audition. They could have shot 60 girls coming in and showed you these That's 10. Spending money bringing those yeah, girls in. Like, so I don't even know. They don't have a start date. It's being shot Australia, but they're shooting it in New Zealand. So you think this is all Inception and it might not actually be happening? I'm not. You don't believe I, it? I do believe it will happen. I do. I just don't think anything's been locked in. Because the, the big problem I've heard is that they couldn't shoot in Australia. They wanted to and they couldn't, so they've moved it to New Zealand, and this has caused just some some tweaking in in the agenda. The hobbits are angry. Well, the queens that they were going to use in Australia now they have to bring everyone to New Zealand, and this is in a pandemic, and New Zealand locked itself off yeah. from the world, and it's got no COVID, so they don't really want a bunch of sticky queens over there. Do you know? What I mean? Like I don't know. So it's just interesting. So I'm not going to review the cast until I see the Meet the Queens video and get an official, this is me, I'm on the cast. But I am going to take advantage of this this uh, advance. Research, and just, because I know Karen thing? from Finance, that's a queen who's been around for a long time that I'm, I've been aware of. She's She tours her show, she's how very great, funny. How so great funny. that Karen has come so far. Because yeah, no <laughs> I'm kidding. sure she's had that name for quite some time. No kidding. It's premiering in 2021 later. Later yeah, the but fall. they still. This, this is 2020. The fall. Of yeah, but like later this year. Yeah, they haven't. So they're filming it now and editing it. So they're. That's why they're still. They haven't decided mm. on a, a start date. So they. Nothing's official. Mm. And usually they film the Meet the Queens and all of that promo stuff after they've shot the season. That's right. So that's why some people come off a little, a little stiff bitter. and angry oh. and they meet the Queens. You can always tell. I bet that bitch lost. That bitch doesn't look like she, she went first. Yeah. Ooh. But, um, 
But yeah, so uh, a Spain is supposed to have theirs. A Spain. A Spain. Yeah. A Spain. Uh, yeah, I'm excited race. for that. That's another one that I'm I. Spicy. The reason that I would be excited to see Australia and Spain because they're different parts of the world that are very themselves. Yes. Like Australia is not influenced by America, or their biggest influence is the South Seas. It's very. Fish. Yeah, and, and fish is their biggest. In uh, yeah, Polynesia. It's, yeah, it's it's a different speed a different world out that way and same with spain like they're very much I'm very curious about spanish drag. well especially because the culture is so fiery yes. lovely like the drag's going to be all body adi adi it's all going to be like tape and dreams tape and top yeah yeah they'll all be they'll all be painted like raven Ooh, I wanted to ask you, did yes. you see Raven this week on the Snatch Game? How could I not see Raven on the Snatch Game? She was gorgeous. Yeah, but but now what do you think of the, the, the color of her skin? Because this has been the big scuttlebutt this week. And she I'll looked tell like you, she could be telling your fortune. Is that what you're going for? That no, she, she, just, she just looks darker than her. If you see her on her season of Drag Race Season 2, she's not dark at all. But... This has been the thing that's come up. Different lighting in season two. But this has come up on, on, on my YouTube page anyway, where people have said, no one mentioned how dark Raven is. Does no one find this offensive? And, the, and I and have to say... Were they saying she was doing blackface? I, I think that's the inference. But I'll tell you right now, Raven is a gay man living in L.A., She's on the beach every day. If she's not working in a dark studio, she is on a beach or on, the, on her roof, covered in oil, baking. And the thing with people that tan, especially as you get older, you don't see how dark you are. You just see, you get, it's like people that And then that one day you're George Hamilton. So there you go. We've got uh, half of the uh, season 13, two or three episodes of season two UK. Australia is uh, waving a carrot no, under our nose. On the horizon. Spain is still a a, 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 a dream. Uh, nothing official yet. And then uh, Canada is underway, but again, nothing, no start date, no air date to be talking about. We yet. have no news. And a possible <laughs> third season of Drag Race UK this year. It's been a big it's year. Working. It's Everyone's busy. watching. I'm, no one's tired of it. I'm excited. Have we hit peak Drag Race? I don't know. Do you I, think there's room for more? I'm excited. For I'm just glad they're franchising out because there That's are right. some countries, even if they only do one or two seasons, there are just some countries where the drag is unique. Well, and I, I think this saying. is a great opportunity. And if we start seeing some spiked performances and people in these other countries as we start to open up all these countries, we'll see an international drag race and it'll be spectacular. <gasps> yeah. Drag race international all stars. Yeah. You heard it here first on Wilma's channel. With the resident. Uh, It'll be like Eurovision, but of drag, and you and I will be the Canadian judges. Ooh. That'd be amazing. <sighs> Scandal. Oh, el scandalos. I so. Will, I will be bribed. Yeah. <laughs> she has been before. It takes very little. What if? A can, a, a can opener and an unlabeled can is Who knows? All, I, all I needed to entice her to put on this whore top and sit Who knows the me. mysteries lie inside that can? <laughs> I don't know. Well, there you go. Uh, I'm. I'm. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you for it's having been, me over. It's Wilma. been a huge. You're a huge star. It's People true. love you. Very busy. And thing. we're gonna do. I think for my birthday, we're gonna do a YouTube live. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, I think All that'll right. be fun. I will start working on my face now. <sighs> Takes me a while to do. This. Never mind that. You're gonna have to make a cake. You can jump out of too. It's cupcakes. I'm going to be hungrier than that. Huh? Cupcake? No. Huh? no you want no. a cupcake, cupcake? I want a tiered extravaganza. Oh, there'll be tears. <laughs> <laughs> and on that happy note, until next time, miss me! Rude! Hide <laughs> your face, Wilma. The shame! The, the shame! <laughs> <laughs> Like this, is the best this is just the credit roll. Like this will just do, be the truth. Oh, I didn't wear a bra. I know. I don't have anything. I'm empty top. I'm, oh, I... Well, not entirely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if we weren't under lockdown, I'd have better friends. It's true. No, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's my drag queen name in high school. Welcome to the stage. Last resort. And then I'd cry. I'd make some good money. Ha, 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 ha.
the lunch staff always. No, they always tip me. They felt bad. With fries? Yeah, hush puppies. They were just throwing them at you. They were actually right. tipping you with. That's all right. <laughs> Get off the stage, hush puppy! <laughs> Look, she's catching them in her mouth. Is this her talent? Is Who knows? This it? Stay tuned. <laughs>